My mother thought I was doing dumb stuff all day long, and I was. But I was a genius at hiding just how dumb I was until one day I did something so dumb I couldn't hide it, and here's what it is. I was walking across my yard in Florida. It was warm. I didn't have shoes on. You didn't need shoes. And I was walking across the grass, and I took a step, and I got this vicious pain in the bottom of my foot. And I thought, oh, I must have stepped on a rock or a piece of glass, just something really sharp, maybe even a nail. So I lifted up my foot and took a look back behind me. It wasn't anything of those things. It was this great big wart on the bottom of my foot. And I looked at it and I thought, that is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And it's growing on me. So I thought, well, I better go tell my mother about this. And then I thought, no, don't tell her. She'll just take you to the doctor and they're going to remove that somehow and that's going to hurt. And I thought, I'll just take care of this little wart issue myself. So I limped into the house and I went down to my bedroom and I opened my little toolbox, which I kept in my bedroom. And inside of it, I had this pair of rusty needle nose pliers. And I thought, yes, this is the correct piece of surgical equipment. So I lifted up my foot and I put it back on the side of my bed and I reached behind me and I got a really good deep grip on that wart. And I said, goodbye, Mr. Wart. And with all my strength, I went chong and I ripped it out. When I ripped it out, I knew that something was wrong because first you could actually hear the sound of ripping flesh. It was like this little rip sound. And I thought, oh, that's not good. And then the blood went shooting straight out on the wall. And I thought, oh, that's not good. And when you see that much blood that fast, pain follows. And the pain was brutal. I hit the floor. I'm slapping the floor. I'm screaming bloody murder. I look back over my shoulder. The blood is squirting out like a lawn sprinkler. And I'm like, mind over matter, mind over matter, mind over matter. You can't feel it. But I could. So I finally got some strength up. I stood up and I went down the hall, leaving a trail of blood behind, and I went into the bathroom. And against the rules, I locked the bathroom door. Well, I went in there and I turned on the spigot to the tub, not sure what I was doing. I stuck my foot under there. And when that water went in that hole, unbelievable hot pain. So I'm hopping up and down in the bathroom, bloody water spattered everywhere, when suddenly on the door I hear my mother knocking. Boom, boom, boom. And she goes, what's going on in there? And I'm like, nothing. She goes, well, what's all this blood out in the hallway? I said, oh, I just had a little accident. She said, are you okay? I said, oh, yes, I'm perfectly fine. She said, well, I'm just concerned. I said, well, thank you for your kindness, but you may now depart. And to my surprise, she does. She walks off. And I'm thinking, oh, that's really good. But in about a moment, I hear her turn around and she comes back and she goes, you didn't do something dumb, did you? I said, no. She goes, you know, you're capable of it. I go, I know I am, but I didn't. She goes, I'm just checking. I said, well, again, thank you for your kindness. And she walks off. I'm standing there and I'm like, oh, this time I did something so stupid. What do I do next? So I opened the medicine chest and I looked in and you know those little white cotton balls? I never in my life knew what they were for. And then I had that like eureka moment. And I'm like, oh, they're for stuffing holes. So I lift my foot up and I shove a couple of them in there and I wrap it up with some tape and I tramp it down. And I'm like, yeah, that'll work. So I clean up the bathroom, go out in the hallway and I clean up the hallway floor and I go in my bedroom and there's the reward for all that pain. Right there in that big puddle of blood is a pair of pliers and I lift it up and right there is that big chunk of bloody warty flesh and I'm like, that is so cool. So I got my journal and I carved a hole in the cover of the journal. I shoved that wart in there and I put a piece of scotch tape across it and I put it out on the windowsill in the sun. And I'm like, Santa Warta, that's a keeper. That night, I got my journal. I write down what's been going on with that wart and the pain. And then I go to bed. Next morning, I wake up and I put my foot out of the bed and it hits the floor. Oh my gosh, that is sore. But I'm like, 
Of course it's gonna be sore. You just put a wart out with a pair of pliers. You know, suck it up. So I go to school, I come home. Next day, I put my foot out and boy, it hits that floor and it's really sore. And I look down and I have this red streak running up my leg. And I'm like, that can't be good. I'll just ignore it. So the next day I go to school and then I come home and I put my foot out the next morning and oh, I look down and that red streak is running up the inside of my leg. And I'm like, I'll just pretend that that doesn't exist. And the next day I wake up and I look in the mirror and I scream bloody murder. I am covered with pussy little boils all over my body. And I go, oh my God, I'm dying. And I run down to the kitchen. I go to my mother, look at me, I'm dying. And my mother screams and goes, you are dying. I'm like, oh great, thanks. So she goes, get dressed, get in the car. So I go back up to my room, I put some clothes on, I get in the car on the whole way down to the emergency room. My mother is driving with one hand on the steering wheel and the other one's up like this, a fist. She's looking at me because she knows I've done something stupid, but I'm not telling. So we go into the emergency room and get one of those little spots for like one of those little beds and a little curtain and I'm sitting there nicely. My mother's here, fist cocked up like this. The doctor comes in, pokes all my little boils, asks me the basic questions. And he looks at me and goes, I'm puzzled. He goes, have you done anything at all unusual you should tell me about? And I just get ready to tell him about the wart and the pair of pliers and ripping it off and all of that. When I look at my mother and that fist is back like this and waving overhead and I just freeze up and I go, no, can't think of a thing. So the doctor goes, well, go in the next room. So I go to the next room, I get away from my mother, I'm standing in the next room, one of those little curtained rooms, when this big nurse rushes in and she looks at me and she goes, take off all your clothes and stand like a naked X. I said, pardon me. She goes, you heard me, naked X, and she leaves. So I disrobe, I'm standing there like a cold naked X. When she comes back with a bucket and a big paintbrush and she dips it into this bucket of medicine called Genshin's Violet, which is bright neon purple, and she paints me purple from head to toe. So I stand there until I dry off and I put my clothes back on and I go out to my mother and I go, can I have a hug? And my mother's like, no, you disgusting little boy. And we go home, and as we're driving in the driveway, I get out of the car, the sun hits me, and I'm glowing purple when my sister opens the front door and she goes, look at him, it's purple pussy boy. And I'm like, oh, thank you for all your kindness. I go to my room, I get my journal, I write all that down, I go to bed that night. Next morning I wake up, I put my foot down, and I look, and that red streak is up my leg, across my hip and heading, even through the purple, toward my heart. And I go, this can't be good. So I go back down to the kitchen. I go to my mom, hey, I forgot to tell the doctor one little detail. She's like, back in the car, because now she knows I've done something stupid. So we go right down to the emergency room, same bench, same doctor, same mom. Doctor comes over, he goes, oh, what'd you forget to tell me? I'm like, Oh, it just sort of slipped my mind. I had this big wart on the bottom of my foot and I took this rusty pair of pliers and I ripped it off. And when I said ripped it off, my mother stood up and pointed at me and looked at the doctor and said, that's my son. He is the dumbest boy in the world. And the doctor looked at me and he said, well, you know what you did, didn't you? And I said, no, I don't know what I did. He said, you gave yourself blood poisoning with the rusty pair of pliers. I'm like, oh. So they gave me some antibiotics. In about three days, the boils start to recede, but it took a month of scrubbing to go from purple to lavender to periwinkle to pink to every shade of purple you could be. I was until finally I got that off, but I never really felt that smart after that.